God. So without further ado, we're going to ask that you please stand out of respect for the awesome God in this great man of God as he prepares to talk to us today, currently serving as a pastor of our youth department. Amen. Elder John Harris. Let's receive him at this time. so much for my place in the house. I thank God for my life and my health and my strength. I want to talk about very briefly since we've already praised God. Let's talk about the power of God. Because Pentecost was the initiation of the pouring out of the Spirit of God. Jesus admonished me. He said, now look, you go on up there and, and you're going to be endued with power. Kind of power is the Holy Ghost power. Because Jesus exhibited it a little bit at a time Amen. before Pentecost. When he came and he let them know that the kingdom of God was at hand, he showed them that when the kingdom is coming, it's going to come with power. Now, when we read the gospel and we declare that we have the Holy Spirit. This is the power that we claim. Amen. Amen. Now, my mother, if you don't mind me talking about her, her ampu being amputated, her leg being amputated. If them years ago, if I had been in Christ where I am in him now, she would have never had her leg amputated. Right. Yes. Amen. No, I'm telling you the truth. Because my love for her and my love for God would have connected. And the power of God would have cleansed her infection. Now, 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 now I'm telling you. I'm telling you, we talked last week about power of attorney. When Jesus said you're going to get this power, he's talking about God is going to allow you and I to be power of attorney over heaven and earth. Am I talking too loud? We talked a little bit last week about power of attorney. And how many of us in here are married? You know what sealed our marriage? Some preacher or officiator concluded the ceremony by saying something like this. By the power vested in me. By the state or by some religious group, he says, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss your bride, and when you turned around, you became Mr. and Mrs. So and so. And those who were there witnessed it and accepted that. If that power given to a person by a state can declare marriage and a union in the flesh. How much more the power of God is able to put in union spirits, man, or cast out spirits. Talk about the power of God. Jesus says, these signs, and now what he said, look, let me tell you something. When you get this Holy Ghost here. Because you, you, do we know what power attorney is? Amen. Amen. I'm an accountant. I'm a licensed tax preparer. And, and a couple of companies, we fill out an uh, application. I think it's 2848 for you to, for me to be power of attorney. I can discuss all their business matters. I have access to all their bank accounts and their monies. Okay. The agreement between me and the business is confirmed through the IRS. Amen. Okay? Okay? So I have the power to write checks, sign checks over that power. They give to me. And I can operate in it. When Jesus told the disciples, he gave him a, he gave him a dry run first. He blessed them, said, now you're going out two by two. 
And I'm going to give you power. They came back. They said, oh, master, even the devils are subject to us. Talk to me. How many know that the devil is subjected to them? And if so, then why are you still losing your battle? And Jesus said, hold on now, don't get all crazy about that. Just be glad that your name is written. Amen. Uh, don't, 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 don't get all crazy about your power. Because see, sometimes you can, you can abuse your power if you don't understand the power. So, so Jesus didn't allow them to keep all that power right then and there. Okay, because he waited later on to endure them with the power of the Holy Ghost to, to remain with them. Okay? Jesus talked about another power. He told James and John and his disciples, he said, look, some of you are standing here today. And some of you won't taste death. Till you see the kingdom of God come in power. And they said, whoa, good boy, leave me some of us going to live for a long time. Do you want to talk about that? He went a couple of days later and took him on top of a mountain. Amen. And the transfiguration Amen. occurred. Do you know that's part of our power? To be transformed. Amen. Amen. Not to be conformed to it, but to be transformed yes. by what? Renewing. The renewing of your minds. Yes. See, some of us have to think and understand our power before we can use our power. What good is your power if you're not using it? How many of us know we have the power of the Holy Spirit? How many of us know how to use it? And I say that because, again, if I would have been in Christ, where I was, like I am now, the way I was, my mother was able to never because I would have been able to cast out that devil. See, the power of God is moved by something else, though. It isn't just moved by God's power, it's moved by God's compassion. See, it's the compassion of God that, that initiates the power of God to proceed in whatever endeavor God sends it out to do. If you can't love, then the power of God, the power of the Holy Ghost cannot exude from you. You can lay your hands all you want to. The disciples didn't say, Lord, Lord, I tell you, I'm glad you're here because, boy, these boys here have been trying to cast out devils. And they done wasted all day long here. This guy's still a monster over here. Now, how many of you have laid hands and nothing happened? Talk to me. Jesus said, hey, what's going on here? He said, yeah, he's been trying to cast out this devil. Ain't nothing happening. And Jesus looking, this guy comes foaming at the mouth, running all around the place. And they all scared of him. You know how it is if we see somebody convulsing and acting all crazy. And, you know, to us they crazy. Got a demon. First thing is we don't want to touch him. That's the first thing. Our minds and hearts and spirits can't even get right to heal him. We so concerned about he might hurt us. So the power of healing won't be able to exhibit itself because you're so concerned and worried about saving yourself. And this guy's foaming and falling around place, and, and the guy's father come up to Jesus and he says, I ain't so many words, I ain't, I ain't got the Bible notes here. He says, uh, he says, look, if you can do anything for us, Man, please help us out. Now, now, just 
the man, when he, the boy, wasn't saying that was the father Amen. who was saying this boy is a problem in our house. Amen. He said, if you can help us out. See, sometimes the problem with the child can be the problem of the whole house. Amen. And so Jesus said, yes. You just don't know me, dude. It ain't meant me. If you can believe. Don't ask me if, if I can believe, if I'm going to do something. See, sometimes we want to know, Lord, can you do it? No, it ain't. Can, can, Lord, can you believe? Do you have the power to believe? Amen. See, because, because it's going to take power to believe in Jesus. Amen. And I ain't saying because you say you have power. doesn't It doesn't mean you have power because you say you have power. Amen. Because this young guy who was on the floor foaming at the mouth all of a sudden had the power to believe. Because that, that all of a sudden this demon throws him down. He got the foaming at the mouth and then Jesus did not immediately do anything with this guy. He looked at the guy's father and said, how long has he been like this? How long you allowed your child to act like this? Why it take you so long to come to me? Sometimes it takes a long time to get to Jesus. Sometimes we allow things to get totally out of hand. Sometimes when it seems like we just can't handle the situation. And we can't. We'll use anything possible. This guy brought his child in the middle of the public. And he ain't care who would handle his child. But Jesus shows up. Isn't that something? That in the midst of our stuff, Jesus can show up. Y'all remember Moses? When he went to the bush? You know, one of the greatest things that came out of the bush that God said, I have come down. He said, I've seen your affliction. I heard you crying. See, sometimes we don't think God hears us. Sometimes we don't think that God understands that we are going through an affliction. You know, I left the doctor the other day, and I got home, and I sit in my chair. I said, Lord, why does this stuff keep happening to me? What is this doctor talking about now? You think I'm going to take some more medicine? Then my wife said, you ain't been taking your medicine. Oh, not really. I used to be on a CPAP machine. I said, I used to be. Then the doctor said, hey, well, look, you want to come back for another sleep study because you should be on a CPAP machine. I said, yeah, I know I used to be on one. He said, what happened? I, said, I stopped. Sometimes we know better. We just don't do better. Amen. You know? Amen. We was, I was talking to the young folk last night, and, and, and you would be surprised. Maybe you wouldn't be surprised how much they know. How much they are looking for Jesus too. When we was talking last night about Pentecost, we went from Pentecost and we started talking about uh, Jesus dying and getting up. And I posed the question. And I said, this is no answer. I'm just giving y'all, I want y'all to think for yourself. When Jesus got up from the, from the grave, was that a second coming? Since he died? Then he rose. And they said, hey, but, but they said, well, hold up, but that was the second coming. But the next time he comes, will be second coming. I said, who says it's supposed to be a second coming when he come back? He just said that he's coming back. We ain't numbering the time he came back. We just need for Jesus to come back. Amen. Amen. I don't care if he come back five times. Come on back six times. Make me no difference. Just come on, Lord. Amen. If we want to count how many times Jesus came now, Man. Amen. 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 We went to Genesis 1 and he was there. Amen. 
John 1 and 6 says, hey, look, there's three that bear record in heaven. God the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Genesis 1 and 1 say, in the beginning, God. And then the Spirit hovered. And God said. God, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. So we were talking about the Word. It didn't say the Son. Well, you mean no, they said Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, John said, well, the Word became flesh. And then so we dealt with that Trinity. We called it because it was three. Then we said, hold on, but is there another Trinity? Because them records bear where, man? The the Father, the Word, and the Spirit bear the record where? And then there's three that bear record in earth. The blood, the the water, and the Spirit. And these three... So I said, well, is there another trinity we should be talking about? Because there's one function of the, uh, of the, the witness in earth and one Godhead in heaven. Both was in common was the spirit. The spirit is part of the Godhead in heaven bearing witness. And the spirit is, is part of the, the witness in the earth. And that's that power we're talking about. It's that self-same spirit in which God baptizes us. Amen. Isn't that right? How many of us have, have, have the Holy Spirit? Do the signs of the Holy Spirit follow us? Now, I'm not, I'm not telling y'all to say, yeah, no, don't, don't tell me anything. <laughs> because you have to examine for yourself whether you're in the faith. Amen. 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 Right. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you that the word of God in me is so powerful that it raised me up from the dead twice. I mean, that, but it, 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 again, it was a testimony for me. And it was a testimony to my wife, it's power. Because I'm still going to die. But at least I can go in peace. Knowing that he is the same spirit can raise me up from the dead that raised Jesus up from the dead. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the what? Power of God. Unto salvation. Paul told Timothy what? He did not give us the spirit of fear but of what? Power. Why do you need power? You know what power is? Power is the ability. It is effective ability to accomplish. That's what power is. It's the effective ability to accomplish. If somebody's trying to lift 125 pounds, if he can't, he needs to keep working until he has the effective ability to know how to use his muscles to lift up that weight. For a cause. Know why we need power? Because when Jesus is sending us out, He said, I'm sending you out as sheep. That, that's going to be among wolves. See, we ain't fighting against flesh and blood. And we fighting too. Do you not know that you are fighting? Against principalities and powers. The spirit be fighting against demons, man, not just one devil. And you can say you have power, but if you don't have the power, the devil is going to know it. Paul, I know. Oh, you, I don't know. But don't forget now, this power is the authority. To speak in other tongues. Amen. To if, you, if you drink some poison, it wouldn't hurt you. To cast out devils. Amen. To lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. 
Amen. The type of power that we're operating Amen. with here. Amen. Don't you fool yourself. Right. Don't you be deceived. So when we cast out a devil, a devil understands because the devil himself falls under the authority of the spirit of God. When Jesus went to one down and what, what he said, he says, Jesus, uh, throw us into the, into the pigs. Don't cast us out. I mean, look, they're begging them. Amen. Please, please, Lord, God, throw us into the pigs. Don't you know what this is the same power that we have? No, 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 seriously. It's the same power that fell on Pentecost. It's in New Bethel today. The same one. And sometimes you don't have it because it's hovering. It's waiting to just fall on you. Sometimes we just can't overcome the things that we want to overcome because we don't have the power to overcome it. Because not only is the power of God moved by the compassion of God, it's also moved by the faith that a person has in God. Because without faith, and it's according to your faith. We all know the story about the woman who had an issue of blood and everything she had. I said, man, if I can just get to Jesus now. Faith came a little little late to us. Sometimes faith comes a little late to us. But that's all right, use it. You know, God is so patient. He loves us so much that he will allow you to use all of your resources. And you finally say, well, Lord, and God is ready. Oh, man. Woo. Oh, I'm so enough glad. I'm glad you ran out of money. I'm glad you ran out of your sense. I'm glad you got stupid. I'm glad you got foolish. I'm glad you got weak. I'm glad you got sad. I'm glad you fell down to your pieces. Now ain't nobody left for you to call but God. But God who is rich in mercy. Is ready. Boy, he can't wait for you to call. You call him, he said, what took you so long? You should call and he shall say, here I am. When you have taken away, when you've taken your finger out of the midst of the yoke. He said, when I come, then you're going, your darkness shall rise and uh, uh, your light shall rise in obscurity. And your darkness shall be at the noonday. I'm glad you fell in the darkness. Now I'm going to pull you out. And I'm going to bring you to this marvelous light. And I'm going to give you power to be a witness to this power. Don't you know all of us are here by power? What power is Jesus talking about? Jesus was talking about the power of witnessing. He said because you shall be witnesses in Samaria and Judea. You know why we're here? Because somebody witnessed that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that's the greatest power. The power to witness that Jesus is the Christ. Yes. You know why? Because, because some people don't think that there is no help. Some people just don't think it. Man, do you see what's going on? Somebody was in some college over there shooting. Did somebody went to the court yesterday, courthouse yesterday, shooting. They said, I ain't going to court. I'd rather kill somebody in the court. But you know, and even in the church, all sorts of stuff going on. They ain't got no business going on. We was talking last week about apostles. And I was, because I, I was, I think I'm telling Deacon, me and Deacon Carr and Deacon Massey was talking. And I was telling him I was teaching the class and asking them, who's the first apostle? Some said, it was Peter. Because he gave him the keys. And, huh? I said, no, 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 no. Jesus was the first apostle. Jesus could not make a person an apostle unless he himself was an apostle. An apostle is nothing but one who sent. And Jesus kept saying, my father what? Sent me. 
And if you read in Hebrews 3 and 1, it says unto our high, to our apostle and high priest. Amen. But apostle is one who is sent for something. And so when Jesus gave his apostles the power of attorney. And we do things in the name of Jesus. Jesus is lending us his power. But you also must know how to use his power. If somebody make you power of attorney, they are giving you power over their assets. And we have access into God's grace by faith. We have access to everything in heaven and on, and on earth. Why was it that we are seated in heavenly places? But that's right, but all these persons. According to his purpose, listen to this, and according to the counsel of his own will. Yes, yes. Meaning God did not talk this over with them, no celestial beings. <laughs> he didn't talk to a bunch of angels and say, well, this is, I, I think we should do this. There was none to give him no ideas. Out of the counsel of his own will and good pleasure, he brought all of this. And then purpose in your heart and my heart. The power of his glory. And lavished upon us graces. Unspeakable. And power incomparable. That we should do his will now and forever. Do you have the power of the Holy Ghost? What are you doing with his power? Because see, I got this one guy, he bugs me to death down in Georgia, and he calls, and he always wants something done. And, and he found out he can't even do nothing because he gave me all the power. <laughs> he said, man, I need, I'm trying to bid on this thing down here, and they asking me who's John Harris. <laughs> Because we can't bid on no government contract. Because the IRS said, unless John Harris sign off on it. Makes me feel kind of good a little bit. Because <laughs> this guy makes me upset so much. You know, he, he upsets me so much, you know. And so I take my time. And he always says, man, I can never get in contact with you. I said, well. So he set up this other office up in Maryland. So I sent a invoice over there and they ain't paid him. I, I, I can't move forward until I get my invoice paid according to the agreement. Let me tell you something. You cannot deal with the devil if you ain't operating in accordance with the gospel. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit you don't have the power Fight with that devil. The best thing for you to do is find somebody with power. Amen. To deal with, with, with that power you're dealing with that you can't deal with. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. One more thing about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost also gives you and I the grace and the power to live right. Amen. And that's the main thing. Amen. Is to live right. Isn't that right? Amen. Because in living right for God gives us the power over the devil. <clears throat> you understand? Us living right gives us the power to live according to God and it allows us also, to trample on the devil. Amen. <clears throat> <clears throat> Who? Operating in the power of the Holy Ghost. 
We know it's easy to praise him. So easy for us to get up and run around the church and do that. I'm not telling you don't do that. No, no, you, you praise God for all that he do for you. But there's also a part that we must do. And, and there's no need for us to declare that we have the Holy Spirit and we don't have the Holy Spirit. Again, because the devil is going to know that you don't have the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. And you can fool me and you, and you, you can even fool yourself when it comes to the Holy Ghost. You, 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 you can fool yourself say, okay, I got the Holy Ghost. And some of us operate only in one side of the Holy Ghost, which is the easiest one, the, the, the speaking in tongues. Amen. But we do that quick. Yeah. La, 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 la. You go home, you don't even like your wife or your husband. Wow. Don't even like him. You don't even like him. You, could, you don't even get along with them. And you go home and beat them up. Tell them how much they need God. Tell them how much they need the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost don't even tell you to do that. You done spake in tongue, your feet hurting from dancing and shouting and singing. Then you get home. And all the nastiness in you come out. Lucky you don't send that girl who was old Donald Sterling house over your house. <laughs> and put your business all in the street. And it's not even funny though. Amen, amen. No, because it, some of us are like that. Amen, amen. Having a form of godliness. Oh yeah, you look like it. You, you played the tight. You got a nice suit on. Carry your Bible. Know how to say brother in God. The Holy Spirit. <laughs> My Lord, he's Lord of over all. He's Jesus. He's Christ Almighty. But you ain't got no power to live right. Having a form of godliness. And denying the power thereof. You can't live right if you try to live right. Because, you know why? Because it's not of works. It's a gift of God. And some of us are so callous and hard that we, we, we can't even receive the gift of God. We still try to do it ourselves. You know, the greatest idol is you. We say dumb stuff like, yeah, the God in me. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. I love the way I love. I know you do. I know you do. And we ought to be crying. We ought to be sad about it. Because if, 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 if any of us in here who are brethren are like that. Then we need to pray a little bit more. Oh, it's easy to dance in front of y'all. I ain't gonna do nothing right now. I'm gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> All right, we got that little laugh out of there. <laughs> no, but 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 seriously, we need to watch ourselves that we might deny God's power unexpectedly. One to play church because you know a, a lot of us in church we've been playing church since we've been children. I, I was the first thing I ever played was church. Amen. My grandparents had us in church. Man, I was in the house garden when I was like four or five years old, and we played church. Man, I mean, boy, we played church. We tear the room up shouting. <laughs> I think my sister one time my, my sister's next to me. I don't know if she had the Holy Ghost before, and and then she messed around had the devil too. <laughs> 
she was a little missionary. She was like nine years old. Maybe she's going to Glendale Hospital every week. She would go with a little headpiece on. She praying for them sick folk. Now my sister, that same one has bipolar disease. She's a Jehovah Witness. But she is so, she is so happy now. And I don't look at her through the lenses of the Jehovah Witness. I see my sister who I love and she's happy. And as long as she's talking about Christ, why should I sweat the small thing? Oh, she's a Jehovah Witness. And see, that's how some of us are. We can't even use our godliness to see people. Right. All we see is, oh, you know, yeah, they, you know, the whole witness, yeah, they're Catholic. Yeah, you know, got a tattoo on. Yeah. Jesus says, hey, look, not all y'all call me Lord getting in evil. They said, oh, Lord, we cast out devils in your name. And we preached in your name. And Jesus said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was hungry. And you didn't even feed me. I was thirsty. You didn't give me nothing to drink. I was, I was, I was at the Hess, a gas station. You walked right by me. I was sitting at the 7 over here. And you act like you ain't seen me. I came and asked you for a quarter. And you put your head down and kept walking. Well, when you do that, Jesus associated himself with the least. He said, when you've done this to the least of, listen to what he says, my brethren. He didn't even call the preachers his brother. Not the ones who cast out the devils. Matter of fact, Jesus said, I don't even know you. I never knew you guys. So don't lean on your so-called gift. But if you can cast out devils, cast out devil. Amen. See, it wasn't because they cast out devils they didn't know him. It was because they didn't feed them. Yeah, cast out devils, but don't forget to feed them too. Right. Don't clean that cat out of, of all his devils and leave, let him walk around because seven more demons will get in them and come back. Amen. Clean them up and feed them and clothe them and teach them. Amen. Bring them to the house of God. Don't leave them on the corner. And so now I fed that brother last week. So what? Feed him again this week. Man, he always begs. We'll always give. Every time you turn around, he got his hand up. Well, every time you put your hand in your pocket and give to him. You begging God for stuff. And God put somebody in your life to beg you. Bragging about how much you got but won't give nothing to nobody. You're destined for hell, not heaven. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. The power to feed. The power to overcome you. Most of the time, we the biggest devils. That's why Jesus said, if you don't follow me on Twitter... <laughs> No, he ain't saying Twitter, did he? I don't. He said, if any man follow me, let him deny who? He ain't say the devil. Overcome yourself. Be better than who you are. Do more than, than what you want to do. I know you want to walk him. I walk too with him. Amen. Might ask you what hat you get in the raggedies hat you have. You know, give you somebody I don't want. <laughs> I don't want that. And we think we've done something. When you get that guy, look, I don't want it either. <laughs> he don't want it either. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. It is able to discern and to see what needs to be done by you. Not God. See, God gave you the power to do it. Sometimes, oh yeah, sometimes, you know, we, we need to do something. We know we should do it. And you know what we do? We sit and we pray. No, 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 no. You know better than that. You praying when you, when you should be doing it. Then, then you start doing when you should be praying. You're backward. Calling good evil and evil good. 
Walking when you should be running. Running when you should be walking. Blind when you should be seeing. You remember when, when, when and I'm, I'm finished after this. You remember when, 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 when Jesus fed the 4,000? Had bread left over. He fed what, 5 more thousand? The disciples got gun boat going on upside me. They got mad because they only had one loaf of bread left. And they was on the boat, and Jesus said, Look, beware of the leaven of the scribes and Herod, the Pharisees and Herod. See, because Jesus just told them that, hey, he's he, he going to get killed. And it was going to be the Pharisees and Herod that was going to instigate it. And he said, y'all need to be aware of the living. And they, was, they were fussing about that one piece of bread. Jesus said, hold up. Are y'all blind? Do you have eyes and don't see? Are you, have your hearts got hard? He said, didn't I just feed 4,000? How many baskets you had? Look, he said, 12. He said, didn't I feed 5,000? He said, yeah. How many baskets I had? Look, seven. What are you worried about bread for? Haven't you seen what I've done? I'll do it again. And that soon after that day in the boat, and the boat gets rough, the old master made must we perish. He got up and said, be still. How long am I going to be with you faithless people? Keep crying to Jesus about what he's going to do. Or what he, Lord, can you help me? Didn't he help you before? Amen. Have you lost heart? Are you blind? Have your hearts got hard? He can do it again. Why are you worrying about bread? Fussing over a loaf of bread and that your season stormy. What's wrong with you? Don't you know Jesus will keep helping you out? You keep asking him for bread. Lord, I'm hungry again. You need to fast sometimes. And worrying about bread, you know what they, they missed out on? When Jesus got crucified, guess who, who indoctrinated the people? The Pharisees and Herod. They the ones made the people say crucify him. And Jesus warned them. Sometimes we worry about tangible gifts and tangible blessings that we forget the spiritual blessings. We don't even know how to defend our faith. I'm taking an apologetics course. And, and I'm not saying, good gracious, all this stuff, good gracious. I'm reading all these philosophers who are speaking against the gospel. I'm like, oh my gracious. I'm reading about all these socialists, you know, Mark and uh, Marx and Kant and, and, and uh, Emmanuel Kant and, and, and uh, 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 Mendel Spinoza. I'm reading all these people. I'm like, good God Almighty. You also got to defend your, your faith. Yeah. When Paul went before Festus and Agrippa, yeah. he said, get this guy out of here before we start believing. No. The testimony of Christ is sure. Yeah. Able to save the soul to the utmost, man. Talk about my dare you. Watch somebody around you get saved. Watch somebody around you get the Holy Ghost. Watch somebody around you get converted. Watch somebody around you have their life changed. Watch somebody go from here to there. Watch somebody go from hell to heaven. From eternal death to eternal life. Talk about Jesus and watch what happens. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you so much. Praise God. Thank God for the word today. Amen. Coming through Elder Harris. Amen. Preached a timely message. Yes, he did. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. I'm going to ask to invite you to please stand. This part of the service that I think is most important. The gospel has been preached. The question becomes who will respond to it? Yes. Elder Harris shared some very, very sensitive stuff with us today. And I venture to say it's even dangerous. It's one of the things that really, 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 really ponders Elder Smith. 
is how we can possess the gift of the Holy Spirit, but override him. <coughs> and I must say, as I sat and I listened to the word being preached, I said, God, how is it? Because he is, he's so powerful, but he's yet a gentleman. Like Elder said, sometimes to me, I think it's even kind of hard to fathom the level of grace that God has extended towards mankind. When he started talking about how we come across, people come across our paths who are begging for things. And we say no to them, but we're constantly begging God. I'm not sure about you and about how the Holy Spirit works in your life, but I can show you how the Lord works in my life. When I do somebody wrong, I can't get rest until I apologize to them. If I told an untruth, do you know the Holy Spirit convicts me? Even, watch this, even if you were talking fast, because sometimes you can talk so fast and not even be thinking about what you're saying before you said something you lied, especially if you tell them the story. Have you ever told a story and embellished? Sometime in your life, you need to write it down yourself because you'll forget exactly what happened. Could be like you're going fishing. And you know that fish only weighed 10 pounds. <laughs> but when you tell it, it was, tw oh, uh, the other, it was like Mama Gill's words. It was John Mungus. It was huge. <laughs> I want to share this with you today because I think God, I know he doesn't make any mistakes. And I think he had this message preached today, not just for the young people. They need the Holy Spirit. Yes. But even us saints that are call our call, who call ourselves mature in God. Let's not have the type of Holy Spirit that only shows you what's wrong with everybody else. I, I love as the Lord was using him, he began to talk about philosophers and great thinkers. It's interesting because what the writer actually said was, he said, you know, you almost persuade me to be a Christian would suggest that he knew what the man of God was saying was the truth. He just wasn't ready to give up what he was doing. Let's not look down our nose at him because many of us have been there too. If it's God been calling you to do something but you weren't ready to give it up. But I ask of you today, saints, don't have the type of Holy Spirit that only allows you to see everybody else and not you. You remember how the, the saying, the old folks used to say, I got six months to mind my business and six months to leave yours alone. Before you know it, you done got through an entire year. That's a good way to stay mess free. Amen. The first invitation today is to those who you're not sure, but you want to be able to profess that you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know you need it, or maybe you need a refilling. Your pastor is a word man. I don't want to be deep. I just want to take what Jesus said at face value. Know that the rest is up to him. He said something to us in Luke chapter 11. He said in verse 9, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Y'all believe that? Hmm. And I'm going to save you some of the details, but I'm going to jump down to verse 13, where he says, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? The analogy that Elder Harris used was right on point. I'm actually getting ready to go do it today. I have a wedding to go do in a few moments. And it's amazing to me how we spend thousands of dollars on stuff. It was just a thought. And I said, you know, when the preacher comes or the minister comes, none of all that stuff can be made official until we say, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you for the first time in public, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so. And, -so. and I, I wish I could tell you all some stuff that people do. <laughs> But it's not official until a minister of the gospel 
declares that they're married and sign that paperwork. And even after that, if I forget to send in the paperwork, it's not valid. When Elder went down that path, I said, man, God, he trusts us so much. But here's the tragedy in that. How dare we have more faith and more confidence in the man than we do have the creator of the universe? Now, I just read to you what Jesus said. So if anybody in here has the Holy Spirit but desires a refilling, or if there's anybody in here who wants the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, listen, in so many words, if you ask, I'll give it to you. And you want to get to the place where you don't care what people think. You know you need God. You know that's your ticket into the kingdom. You don't want to go through all the motions and then stand before God and he said, but I never knew you. I beg of you, church, today, don't let this moment pass you by. If you need the Holy Spirit to embrace you, to empower you, if you know there are times in your life when you feel the leading and the prodding of the Holy Spirit, but you're afraid, understand today, based upon the gospel preached today, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Anybody else? And all we want to do is pray. The Holy Spirit does the rest of the work. That's where God has me now. Stop thinking yourself through stuff. Stop going so deep. Just do what the word said to do. I love what Elder Harris said. These signs shall follow them. What type of signs are following you if you believe? Amen. And he's so right. That Holy Spirit, it makes me treat my wife right. The Holy Spirit makes me treat my children right. It makes me go and apologize to my children when I've had a stressful day and I said something to them and took it out on them and they were not guilty of anything. The Holy Spirit makes you go back and get that right. Yep, yep, the incident may have happened two weeks ago, but the Holy Spirit will allow you to go to another adult and say, you know something, I said something, I didn't like the manner in which I said it. The Holy Spirit will also help you not say things like, if I've offended you. You heard Elder Harris say, there ain't no if, you know. <laughs> So let's not play games with it. And you'd be surprised how people sitting right here, they might not tell you, but they're thinking it. Especially as you sitting there. I mean, I'm going forth and preaching and whatnot. And you'd be saying, you know, what kind of Holy Spirit does Ellis Smith have where God couldn't show him this or God doesn't show him that? I just, God doesn't do me like that. When I mess up, he shows me. And watch this, what, what, what the writer said. He says, if, you, if there's an ought against you and your brother, if you think it, let me say it like that. If you think it, go and get it right. Anybody else need the Holy Spirit today? I don't know about you. I do. I need God to continue to lead me. And you know what else I need prayer for? Because God has filled me with his Holy Spirit. But I need prayer for enough common sense to stop trying to do stuff myself. And, and elders, boy, he shared it, God, through him so beautifully. Saints, it might blow our minds to know that sometimes God doesn't want you to be at the end of your rope when he comes to you. Sometimes he wants you to be at the beginning of it. And here's what I mean. He did a beautiful job of sharing after you done run out of your money, after you broke, busted, disgusted, you ain't got nothing else to do, then you turn to the Lord. While God is happy, can we get to the place where we turn to God first? I have people right now who call me or very close to me and say, Elder, how are you doing? And they're asking me about my parents. How are you doing? And, and you know what? I'm not sure that I know what they're looking for, but I told one of them last night, I said, listen, my hope, my faith, my everything, my life is in God. I've gotten to the place where it's no sense in me reading this if I'm not going to believe it. It's no sense in me practicing what I'm, you know, all I mean, preaching the gospel if I don't believe it, you know? I believe God and I believe that if the Lord and when the Lord, as Elder Sheer, because we all going to leave here, when the Lord takes my parents home, guess what? It's well. Amen. And I'm not, this is not some mental exercise I'm taking myself through. I know exactly where we are. But I trust God. What about you? What about you? Do you trust God? Do you trust God with your life? And let me tell you, when God really wants you, he knows how to get your friends to start turning against you. Well, he knows how to separate you unto himself so you can be with him. And you know what else? When he's doing that, he won't leave you confused. He'll let you know because I'm trying to get your attention. Anybody else? Do You would just like prayer for what pastor's talking about because we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need it.
Why do we need an elder smith? Because he's a teacher. He told us in John 14, he'll bring all things to your remembrance. Not only is he a teacher, he's a comforter. How many of you know he's a confident? Oh, man, I pray you get to the place where you realize that the Holy Spirit is real and that you can talk to him and never worry about your business being told again. This stuff you can say to him, he's not going to tell anybody. Matter of fact, his job is to take the information you gave to him and give it to the Father. I don't know about you. I trust him. I trust him. Anyone else? Praise the Lord. Bow your heads with me and lift your hands. Lord, I pray, Father, for every person today that has gotten in the line that's responding to the word. I pray, God, we're not praying for the Holy Spirit because you already told us you gave it. You're pouring it out. I pray for the ability to receive it, Lord. I pray, God, that you would allow us to forget everything that we have been taught that prevents us from receiving your spirit because we have preconceived notions. I pray today, Father, that you would damage that ignorance permanently so that we can receive you, Lord, the way you desire for us to receive you today. I pray, Lord, that you will, yes, follow it up, God, with even the evidence of speaking in other tongues, Lord. For we can see that in the scripture. And Father, for those, Father, that you desire to fill today, thank you in advance, Lord Jesus. Because we realize, God, everything that we are to receive by you, we receive by faith. I thank you, Lord, for those that may be home when you move, those that may be in their cars when you move, or wherever we are. My desire is, Lord, that your people receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a gift and you gave it because we need it. It empowers us. It gives us the ability to complete and fulfill our God ordained assignment in the earth. I pray for those who are or already have received the Holy Spirit but need a refilling. Lord, we know God in life that we can go and go and go and run low and never refuel. But today we're stopping asking that you would refill us today. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a love for your word. Thank you for giving unto us to listen to songs that glory, Father, that edify, that build you up. Thank you for changing even our conversations, oh God, and challenging our own selves to talk about you because we know that if you're lifted up, you have a habit of drawing all men unto you. We're praying for souls to be saved today, Lord. Oh God, I pray for every need today, for every individual that has responded to your word, that it will be met in the name of Jesus. And we thank you. We receive in advance, Lord, the baptism of the Holy Spirit today in the name of Jesus. We receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit that will enable us to walk right, to talk right, to treat each other right, God. That is our ticket into the kingdom of God today. Father, I thank you. I give you glory. I give you power, honor, and praise in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you and we pray. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Listen, I say pastor says this all the time. And I'll probably go to my grave saying this. Just like salvation is not about a feeling, the Holy Spirit is not about a feeling. It's about believing. And I sit sometimes and listen. And there's a reason why God, I'm sure he made me pastor. If I don't tell you nothing else, don't think yourself out of a blessing. Learn to take the word of God and receive what God has said. That's it. Now, watch this. There is manifestation that can take place as a result after that. But the most, the foundational thing is for you to be able to believe. I love what Elder Harris shared. Just like, like I said, I'm getting ready to go marry a couple. You might think there's nothing spiritual about that. Oh, but yes, it is. I don't have the time to tell you about it. Oh, yes, it is. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. Once I pronounce that they're husband and wife, nobody is going to second guess that. They're going to go home act like they married, they're going to go on their honeymoon, act like they married, and nothing you can say can change their mind. And so I'm telling you with the word of God, do me a favor. And this is what I recommend because I'm very careful about this follow-up. Just start thanking God for the Holy Spirit. God, thank you for filling me. God, thank you for filling me. And I'm telling you, you believe in it, watch God start to manifest stuff in your life. God, thank you for refilling me. 
Because you'll have days like pastor where you want to get stuff done, but you, you're sensitive enough to know that the power of God is resting upon you. And you'll go someplace and just worship God and let him do what he needs to do. You'll go someplace and just spend time with God. Because you'll see in scripture too, as Elder Harris was jumping back and forth and I was thinking about this. The disciples just wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit one time. You look in the book of Luke, you'll see where the Holy Spirit breathed on them. God did some work with them. And then you see in Acts the second chapter, he did some more work with them. That's how we want to be. We want to keep coming back. We want to keep coming back. But do yourself a favor. Start thanking God in faith for filling you. And do it today. God bless you. Lord. Thank you so much for all you who were streaming live with us that have visited us today via streaming live. Thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed yourself. Praise the Lord. And we pray that you would give us an opportunity to serve you again. Amen. Because here we serve an awesome God. Amen. Amen. And if the Lord lays upon your heart and you want to be a blessing, amen, go to our website www.nbhop.org Make that donation because it is because of people like you that give to the degree that you do that enable us to remain on the air. God bless you. We love you. Know this much. You ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come. God bless you. Amen. How many of y'all know we have heard from heaven today? Amen. Uh, you know what? This is this church. We are so blessed. Uh, we have, I look at the gifts around here. You have people like Pastor.